to so again if you want to create your own little weird thing furniture some component isolated like a weird wall organization that has a curve or whatever where do we go we go to component expand comp model in place okay this opens an entirely different interface you should always select what is the thing that you want to do uh, in our case it's mainly furniture but you might be doing a weird wall you might be doing a weird floor or you might be doing a weird i don't know like a stair so it's important that you decide what is the, the weird thing you want to do and select it here properly. So imagine a furniture. You know, what do we have? A, I'll give it a name. Furniture, say weird like chair on. When you're in this mode of modeling place, everything tones down. It's like gray. You can't select anything. Not only that, the interface changes slightly. You have extrusions, blends, as well. This sounds a bit more familiar because it, it's the same or very similar language to Rhino's uh, way of doing geometry. Also, there's some stuff that's going to become slowly important, which is reference plane and set plane, these things here. How does this work? How do I create my own stuff? Well, the good thing about modern in play is that you still have the building to refer to. So you can actually use the building as guidance to create your own project. No? But in general, is that you can create extrusions, blends, revolves, sweeps, and sweeps, and then what is called voids, which is like a Boolean um, difference of the previous or cuts away from the previous. The way it works, you click on whatever you want to do, an extrusion. It opens up a little interface that you can create uh, polylines or lines, as long as they're close. Curves. Oops. Trying to close this one because the spline doesn't close like in Rhino. You have to do two splines to close this. Okay, as long as they're close polylines, you can say okay, and you can change the parameters for extrusion and beginning. You can change that, and there you have whatever extrusion you want. You can finish, you can also select these guys and assign a material here on the material. And then you can say I'm done with the model. When you say you're done, we go back to the project interface, walls, doors, etc., and you have your own your personally designed furniture piece with the material you assign. <clears throat> you're done. You've created your first furniture. You always select it, edit in place, and continue working on that. For example, you may not want all of this, so you can edit the extrusion and get rid of some of those and create some other geometries or whatever it is, no? You can create the same void extrusion and it basically works exactly the same, but if you have an element that goes inside of another one, it what it does is cuts it away from it. It feels like it's not there, but actually if you hover on top of it, you can see the ghost presence and you can still edit it in different ways. There you go. Okay, that's another piece of furniture. Obviously you can edit in place and create another extrusion of different height with a different whatever pattern. And higher, no? different material. Now, at the end, I created one single model in place. I did many furniture, one, two, three. Normally, I recommend that you work on one furniture and you give it a particular name. Let's call it bench or counter or whatever it is. And then you create another model in place and you create another element such as the chair or whatever it is. Don't do like I did with many pieces in one. Okay, so we did extrusions. 
Another thing that's very important to know is how do we work actually with with a set uh, reference plane, the work plane. This is extremely important if you want to advance a little more in, in the world of Revit into doing more, a bit more sophisticated things. If you, we need to understand this carefully. And I'm gonna be done with this in one minute. So, and we'll talk about this further. Set allows you to change this, the working plane that you're drawing curves as. So I'm gonna actually create one in place furniture, call it okay. And when I create extrusion, I can draw lines anywhere, but they're always drawn in this particular plane. I can show that plane and it's telling me it's actually the zero, zero plane. So every extrusion will be always perpendicular to that plane. But wait a minute, what if I wanna do an extrusion in this direction? No. Well, that's when actually we can do an extrusion, but set the working plane in a different place. For example, set, and this window, we're gonna start getting familiar with it, allows us to assign where we want the working plane. So we can, for example, pick a plane, select that plane, for example, just to name one, and say show. And notice how now in blue is that plane over there. That means that I can draw my extrusion curve, it will be drawn in that particular plane. You can say okay, and that will make the extrusion perpendicular to that plane. It's extremely important to know where is my working plane? No. So you know where you're drawing your curves, and that will affect how you're creating the rest of the geometries. And that will that's relatively easy with extrusions, but when we start doing uh, sweeps, uh, blends and, and revolves and all these things, we need to be very careful about where we're setting our working plane. And I will talk more about that in our next class next week, okay? Um, let me stop this.